Hi, I'm Kelly Galbraith, and welcome to my podcast, Serendipity. This is episode two. I've called Quarantine a Brief History. Yesterday afternoon, after days of being housebound, I picked up my camera and hiked along a trail on the shore of the Atlantic Ocean called Seaside Park. It's not far from my house. There, in the near distance, is Partridge Island. Its sole connection to land is a quarried breakwater that acts as a deterrent to the curious. The rocks are huge and the Bay of Fundy tides are the highest in the world. A quarantine station was created at Partridge Island in 1830. Ships coming into the harbour had to stop and be screened. No one showing symptoms of smallpox could land in the city. They had to be treated and quarantined at the hospital on the island. Scoot ahead 15 years and the potato famine and typhus epidemic in Ireland prompted many sick and starving folk to seek refuge in New Brunswick. The number of people quarantined in Partridge Island is quite staggering. Between 1845 to 47, there were 17,000 patients in quarantine. Many people died. The island holds their remains in a mass grave. In 1854, cholera was brought to the island by German immigrants. In an eight-week period, 1,500 people died. It wasn't until 1941 that Partridge Island ceased to be used as a quarantine station. Thinking about Partridge Island that was used to quarantine immigrants 200 years ago makes me wonder, when was isolation of the sick first documented? As a church musician and familiar with Bible readings, and of course, Charleston Heston's portrayal of Moses and all those plagues that were visited upon Egypt. I also remember the Old Testament book. It's not read much in church today, Leviticus. It's a book that's filled with rules. In chapter 13, verse 46, the lawmaker writes, He shall be unclean as long as the disease is on him. Being unclean, he shall dwell apart. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. So thousands of years ago, patients were being quarantined. I think the writer in this instance was referring to leprosy. Some hundreds of years later, Hippocrates, an ancient Greek physician, wrote about isolating those that were sick to protect the healthy. What I find fascinating is that the word quarantine comes from the Italian word quaranta, meaning 40, 40, not 14. We've been instructed nowadays to isolate ourselves for 14 days if we've been overseas or if we've been in another province. Where did those before us come up with 40 days? I guess they thought it would take that long to disinfect, heal, sanitize. Ah, serendipity. We're now in Lent. Lent has 40 days. Because Jesus is believed to have spent 40 days alone in isolation in the desert. The word quarantine was used for the first time in 1377 for a new hospital that had been established especially for people dealing with the plague. These hospitals were called Lazaretto, referencing the man Lazarus that Jesus raised from the dead. They were built far enough away from the center of the city to restrict spread of disease but close enough for supplies and to transport the sick. Composers, especially those who lived in the medieval, renaissance, or baroque periods, were all too familiar with quarantine measures and the havoc pandemics caused to their family, their career, and their pocketbook. The music that we're listening to now is by renaissance composer Palestrina, who lived in the 16th century. Tragically, in the 1570s, he lost his wife, brother, and sons from the plague. Another Italian composer, Claudio Monteverdi, paid homage to the saint of the plague, St. Roche, in his choral piece, O Beate Vie. Monteverdi and his family were spared the ravages of the plague that surfaced in 1630, 
but it did leave him without a commission. And that's like most of the musicians around the world today who are self-quarantining. It's resulted in loss of gigs and income. So we've had leprosy, smallpox, cholera, there's been Ebola, there's been typhoid fever, the 1918 influenza pandemic, and then again in 1957 to 1958, and then closer to home and time there was SARS, now there's COVID-19. So what do you do? Quarantine if you're sick, self-isolate to keep yourself and others healthy, and social distance when needing to feel the sun on your face. Stay well, stay safe, until next time. Yeah. Uh -huh.